biggest adoption of pornography, that is the biggest jump in people viewing actually occurred with VHS tapes. Mm. So as soon as people could view privately in their home, it suddenly became a lot more intriguing than having to go to a theater and watch it and either masturbate in the theater or try and remember, and, you know, have it uh, in the, the colloquial spank bank uh, to take home. <laughs> I did a lot of digging and research and I've kind of found that there's a lot of big names who are kind of high up or, you know, somewhere in the Latter-day Saints church, the Mormon church for those unaware, um, who are behind these movements like, you know, fight the new drug and covenant eyes, which, you know, they don't even try to hide their religious affiliation. But what it looks like to me is that you know, at least in the beginning, it was church organizations that would put up websites that looked scientifically legitimate. And it looks like there was a lot of bogus research too. The scholar at University of Nebraska-Lincoln named Kelsey Burke has written about this interesting transition where the church especially was clearly anti-masturbation when they started. Uh, that's also true of one of the large anti-porn organizations. Now, NoFap started as an anti-masturbation organization. Uh, but it seemed basically like they couldn't get traction that way. You know, it's just kind of an old fashioned idea. No one really believes that stuff anymore uh, as well. They shouldn't. <laughs> and so they found by putting this in the verbiage of pornography, they could get people on the left and the right uh, who felt there were problems with pornography and kind of unite these groups. So my sense is it's fairly strategic. But it seems like these organizations realize that the moral message, don't masturbate, don't have sex before marriage, those were very unpopular positions. So by rebranding it as a health concern, they mm -hmm. were really able to get a lot of people on board. And I think that's how they were able to thread that coalition of so there was a study that specifically looked at potential downregulation issues with respect to pornography viewing and did not find evidence of downregulation. So the one study that directly confronted that hypothesis uh, did not find evidence for it.